Hey guys, with patch 9.1 well underway and players finally reaching full levels of gear, we are getting to see the meta become fully established. While our last tier list was done prior to the season even starting, some of our predictions didn't hold up. So once again, we got together with our rank 1 consultants, gathered their thoughts and opinions so we could present to you the best melee for patch 9.1 arena update. Also, if you're looking to increase your rating this season, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com slash wow. Over the years, we've seen people go from challenger to gladiator, all by implementing the lessons we teach in our videos. In fact, we are so confident in your results that we're the only service to offer a money back guarantee. Our class courses teach you the fundamentals you need to master your class in PvP, and we have hundreds of exclusive commentaries featuring matchup breakdowns directly from the best players in the world. You'll also gain premium access in our Discord server where our team of pros respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are truly serious about improving. Starting from our lowest tier of C, our first edition is Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw at the start of the season didn't look too promising, even despite having some new additions such as Float Like a Butterfly and Enduring Brawler. Really though, Blizzard have completely missed the mark with Outlaw, and it doesn't really do too much of anything, and its previous niches have all either been removed or reworked, leaving the spec a skeleton of its former self. You do less sustained damage than Assassination, have less burst and control than Subtlety, and now even every rogue spec has Dismantle and Tricks of the Trade, leaving players with no real reason to ever pick up this spec, sadly leaving it in our bottom tier. Joining Outlaw, we've got another spec you don't really see too much, or, well, at all, really. Fury Warriors. Much like Outlaw, there just isn't any reason to play this spec compared to its much stronger arms counterpart. 9.1 did see the addition of Slaughterhouse, giving Fury a nice addition of Immortal Strike healing reduction effect, but then even this causes you to sacrifice a PvP talent, not to mention only lasts 6 seconds. Gaining a Mortal Strike effect also came with the loss of Thirst for Battle, removing the one mobility niches that Fury had going for them. Plus, come on, they don't even have defensive stance or any of the other additional utility that ARMS brings. Much like Outlaw, there just isn't any reason to ever play this spec, at least not in its current iteration. Then our third and final spec finding itself in our lowest tier is another ugly stepsister spec, this time Unholy Death Knight, which drops down from our initial prediction of A tier. Unholy Death Knight suffers extremely badly from PvP talent bloat, having so many good options that they often have to sacrifice defensive utility in order to deal their maximum damage. This is something their Frost counterparts don't have to deal with as much, not to mention Unholy, while still very burst driven, focuses primarily on consistent pressure and whittling down opponents, something that just doesn't fit in our current metagame. And when compared to the powerful and easy to achieve burst of Pillar of Frost and Chill Streak, just can't really compete. Jumping up one tier now, we've got our B tier. These specs are a little stronger and both have some very viable composition options, but standalone, these two specs just are not performing too well. Firstly is Enhancement Shaman. Enhancement seems to be either incredibly strong or rarely seen, but there doesn't seem to be much in between. And right now, they're just rarely seen and very weak. Granted, Enhancement, if given uptime and a composition like Turbo, can do some very high damage, but standalone, they're one of the easiest melee to kill, having limited defensives. 9.1 also saw nerfs to hybrid across the board, and with how reliant Enhancement is on their heals to survive, haven't been able to recover too well since. Although, when paired up with an arms warrior, they can help to gloss over some of those weaknesses, giving Enhancement hope inside of our B tier. Joining them, we've got Frost Death Knight. Frost Death Knights received a great deal of changes early 9.1, getting talents like Bitter Chill, Spell Warden, and Strangulate. So many changes, in fact, we had them in our S tier for our early prediction. Well, we really missed the mark here. Frost Death Knights are struggling and underperforming in both 3v3 and 2v2, especially in the latter. For 3v3 though, Frost Death Knights can still act as a very strong, almost support-esque clask for a lot of the stronger melee in compositions like Windwalker, Death Knight, or TSG. As Warrior especially helps to combat some of Frost Death Knights' inherent weaknesses when up against high damage melee classes. Standalone though, exactly like Enhancement Shaman, they're lacking and earn their spot in our B tier. Stepping up now to our A tier, we've got some specs which are all performing decently well, but just all lack that certain something to push them up higher on the list. First of all is Survival Hunter. Survival has actually been having some decent success in both 2v2 and 3v3. 2v2 though is where it shines, as a good answer to a lot of popular melee classes. 
Tools like Mending Bandage and Steel Trap really help at slowing down the game and keeping yourself and your team alive. What stops survival reaching higher on this list though is a lack of ranged damage when compared to its beast mastery counterpart, meaning most of the time you can struggle to get your full damage off as you can't really go toe to toe with a lot of the more meta melee. However, if we do see some nerfs to beast mastery later in the season, we may see survival harpoon higher in this tier list. Joining survival inside of our A tier, we've got Havoc Demon Hunters. Havoc Demon Hunter overall is very strong offensively, having some of the highest damage output in the game. Both burst and sustain, coupled now with a newly added mortal strike effect tied to blade dance, making the talent far more functional than the old rendition with Fell Rush. What holds them back from reaching higher on this tier list is their defensive capabilities, being one of the few melee unable to use any defensive while stunned. This combined with their lack of passive damage mitigation against melee means they can often struggle into most other cleaves. Not to mention when compared to the melee ranked higher on this list, Demon Hunter lacks in other departments such as team utility or even crowd control. But if we do shift into a more caster fueled meta, we'll definitely see Demon Hunters fly up the tier list. Then last but not least, joining our A tier, we've got Assassination Rogue. Asa Rogue, much like Demon Hunter, has an abundance of both sustained and burst damage, coupled with the lockdown of Kidney Shot. The huge addition of Hematoxin has been a nice addition, but still not enough to push them higher in our tier list. We had Assassination placed at S tier originally at the start of the season, but much like the aforementioned Demon Hunters, they struggle against a lot of the popular cleaves that exist, making the sustained damage of Assassination almost redundant, as you can't go toe to toe with many of the more popular melee specs on this list. Nonetheless, Assassination has still had some success for the most part in 2v2, as well as some more niche compositions in 3v3, although outshined by its sub counterpart, but if you still prefer the more brute force version of Rogue, it remains a very viable option. Okay, so before we jump into our highest tier of S, we're going to be squeezing in one last tier, our A plus tier. These specs are all just on the cusp of making it into our S tier. First of which is Retribution Paladin. Ret brings an incredibly strong kit, having some ridiculous burst damage during their Avenging Wrath as well as some great support with tools like Blessing of Protection, Freedom, Sacrifice, and even Sanctuary. What's stopping Rhett reaching higher on this list is much like other classes in that they just make very good partners for some of the stronger classes which go on to bolster their strength. For instance, almost every single Retribution Paladin sticks with one composition, and that's when piggybacking off the strength of a warrior. Standalone, Retribution just isn't as strong, so we can't justify putting it in our highest tier. This makes perfect sense when you look at their performance in 2v2 specifically. Also making it into our A plus tier, moving up from our initial prediction of B, we've got Subtlety Rogues. Sub Rogue, compared to their assassination counterparts, are having a lot more success in both 2v2 and 3v3. Their control based style, combined with the Covenant swap to Kyrian, has given them a lot more burst during their setups. Sub still can't go toe to toe with many other melee on our list, but they don't need to. You can purely focus on setups and play for a more control driven approach. What's stopping them from reaching our highest tier despite being very high in both 2v2 and 3v3 is the fact, much like Retribution, they require a stronger spec to carry them. Just in this case, instead of Warrior, it's a Fire Mage. And there's going to be one final addition before we jump up into our highest tier, Feral Druids. Now, you may notice a common theme here with our A plus tier. It's including all specs which you may see very commonly and are all undeniably strong. But every one of these specs is the partner in crime to another spec that's just a lot stronger. And Ferals are the Robin of their Batman of Beast Mastery Hunters. Standalone, Feral is still very strong, having decent success in 3v3 and 2v2 with their high consistent pressure and survivability, only just not making it into our highest tier of S. Okay then, we finally made it to our highest tier. These last two melee are the gold standard, having almost next to no weaknesses or just flat out broken damage. And the latter is exactly what our first spec brings. I'm of course talking about Windwalker Monk. Windwalker right now is just a completely broken spec. The damage of either spinning crane kick or even just serenity is enough to kill any player almost instantly. And with both having such low cooldowns attached, this can present such a huge win condition in any single arena game. Not only do Windwalkers have a ton of high damage and burst, but they also have great mobility and even decent team utility on top. 
What was once a Windwalker's biggest weakness was their inherent squishiness. But now, with most monks swapping over to Necrolord, the addition of Fleshcraft has added a bunch of survivability into their kit, helping to mask over their defensive weaknesses. And now, we're just left with the meta defining high burst melee with a ton of survivability and mobility, which can fit into a ton of different compositions and performs exceptional in both 2v2 and 3v3 alike. Last but not least, the next spec making it into our S tier is Arms Warrior. Now, come on, you knew this was coming. Arms Warrior just honestly has it all. They're the gold standard of any melee spec right now. Warrior is so good right now, they make other specs playable. Specs like Rhett, Death Knights, or even Enhancement Shamans all include a Warrior in their best compositions. And that's because not only do Warriors provide super high consistent and burst damage, a mortal strike effect, and even instant crowd control, but they also have great setup with either Conqueror's Banner or Spear of Bastion depending on Covenant. Naturally, they're almost impossible to kill thanks to defensive stance and ignore pain, but more importantly, help to make their team a lot more durable with meta-impacting abilities like Intervene, War Banner, Rallying Cry, and even abilities like Duel or Disarm. Currently, if you asked for us to give you a weakness that warriors suffer with, we'd struggle, and this shows in not only their representation, but also success in both 2v2 and 3v3. Okay then, to recap, on screen now you'll see all of our melee specs and their tier rankings. Honestly, if you're looking to push this season and reach your rating goals, anything from A tier onwards is going to give you a good shot. But as always, every melee on this list is playable to some extent. It all just depends on your goals. Make sure to let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you agree with our placing. And there you have it guys, that's our best melee for patch 9.1 tier list update. We'll be releasing ranged and healers within the coming days, so be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to be notified the second they go live. For now though, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.